Hey everyone, welcome back for a little TLC. For the past several weeks, we've been talking about self-control and specifically in the last two weeks, we talked about self-control and sex. And the topic last week um, posed the question, is waiting until marriage to have sex still necessary? And you can go back and watch that video if you want to familiarize yourself with the results from that question. Um, however, I allow people to give comments on why they thought that it was still necessary or why they thought that it was not necessary. And I'm going to break down one of those comments today um, that came from people who said, yes, it is still necessary. And that is the phrase, holiness is still right. And I wanted to break that um, particular comment down this week because as I thought about it, I was like, <laughs> like, what does that, what does that even mean? What does it mean to say that holiness is still right? And is that an adequate phrase to tell someone if they are struggling in the area of sexual self-control? So that's what we're going to talk about this week. Let's get into it. <music> So holiness is still right. It's a phrase that I've heard people say, not just when it comes to, to sex, but also when it comes to drinking alcohol or really any sin that the person who is saying it um, wants to kind of say we shouldn't be doing. They will say holiness is still right. That's the reason why you shouldn't do that because holiness is still right. And I think at the end of the day, people just mean that no matter what is going on in the world, no matter what the world says is okay, holiness is still right. And there is scripture, I believe in Leviticus and also in, I'm going to go with 1 Peter, where the Lord says, be holy for I am holy. So the statement itself makes a lot of sense that holiness is still right because God is still holy and therefore we are still called to holiness. But I think the issue comes in with that particular phrase when we say like, well, what do you mean by that? What does it actually mean to be holy? And I think that that can be a very vague and it can be a very overwhelming type of standard to have to meet. To be holy means to be set apart for God or for the purpose of God. And so we have to think about is what we're doing, is how we're acting, is how we're living indicating that we are set apart for the purpose of God? Or do we seem to be going along with what everyone else is doing regardless of whether or not they are a believer? Again, I believe that holiness is an incredibly difficult standard. It can be an overwhelming standard to have to meet. But I think that that is only the case because saying holiness is still right points us to the fact that we need to be holy, but it does not point us to the one who helps us in our endeavors to be holy. Y'all, holiness is not attainable if we do not have access to the one who makes us holy, to the one who is able to sanctify us and to actually make us holy. And I think that's what we really need to focus on. Not so much that we need to be holy, but we need to focus on the fact that there is one who helps us in our endeavors to be holy. When it comes to holiness, I think that there are three main categories. On one end, there are people who say we can't meet this standard of holiness, so anything kind of goes. On the other hand, there is this camp that is striving for holiness on their own and this kind of self-righteousness type of thing. But I prefer to be in the, the other camp that acknowledges that holiness is not attainable on our own, but we do have an advocate in the Holy Spirit who helps us to achieve holiness. Those who believe in Jesus Christ are sealed with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth. So it's not a matter of just, yes, you need to be holy. It's a matter of, can you follow the voice of the Holy Spirit? Do you listen to your convictions? Do you actually allow the Holy Spirit to guide you into all truth and allow you to walk in holiness? 
Jesus left us a tool or rather a person who will help us to become holy. And I want people to focus on that rather than saying holiness is still right, which it is, say holiness is still right. And when you have the Holy Spirit, when you listen to the Holy Spirit, the Lord will sanctify you. And holiness is something that we can actually achieve. There was some scripture that we went over in Christian Ed last week. Yes, and it comes out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 23 through 24. And that reads, may God himself, this was a prayer that Paul was saying to the church at Thessalonica. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. And I really like that scripture because first of all, it says that the Lord will sanctify you, um, which means that sanctification, this endeavor to holiness is a process, first of all. But second of all, holiness is something that the Lord does for you. Holiness is something that the Lord helps you to be able to achieve. That scripture says that the one who calls you, that being God, is faithful and he will do it. That means that God is the one who sanctifies you. God is the one who keeps your whole spirit, your soul, and your body blameless as we wait for the Lord Jesus to return. So y'all, do not try to achieve holiness on your own. It's not a self-righteous thing. We cannot do it. Um, there's another scripture in Philippians 1 and 6 that says that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So that means this is a process that's going to continue to go on over and over again, this sanctification process, even all the way until Jesus Christ comes. That means we should allow the Lord to have his way if we want to be holy. So my encouragement, if you hear the, the phrase holiness is still right, is to remember that it is, but you are able to achieve it. It's not overwhelming. It's not too vague. If you listen to the promptings of the Holy Spirit and allow the Lord to continue the work that he began in you when you accepted Jesus Christ as your savior. That's really what I have for today because I I sometimes struggle with the phrase holiness is still right because it, it, it can be overwhelming and it can be vague if we leave it just at that. But if we remember that as believers, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit guides us into all truth, then it really just becomes a matter of are we going to listen to the Holy Spirit? And I pray that we will be better at listening to the Holy Spirit and following the guidance of our ultimate teacher so that we can be sanctified, so that we can be kept blameless, so that we can be holy for God is holy. The thing that I love about God is that he gives us the tools that we need. He gives us the person that we need to be able to please him. And that is the Holy Spirit. So please listen to the Holy Spirit so that you can be holy as God is holy, because holiness is still right. I would love to know what you all think about this. Um, do you like when people say the phrase holiness is still right? Um, do you think that that is a difficult or easy type of standard to achieve? Which camp do you fall in? Are you a anything goes because we can't achieve holiness? Are you more on the self-righteousness end or do you want to be better about listening to our advocate when it comes to being holy? I love to know what you all think about this and I will see you next week for a little TLC. Bye-bye.